At the symposium in honor of the 75th birthday of Ted Hensch, over 500 scientists from all over the world came together to celebrate Ted. I have to say I'm extremely honored and also very thrilled to be here to help celebrate Ted's life. To me, Ted is a, a fine example of some of the best scientists out there. Happy birthday, Ted. Uh, uh, we've been friends for a long time. I just enjoy his company. I just enjoy thinking about science with him. Uh, and uh, he's a wonderful person. So again, um, happy birthday, Ted. In 2005, Theodor Hensch received the Nobel Prize for developing an optical frequency comb synthesizer. The device enables extremely precise measurement of the number of light oscillations per second for the first time. The measurements of the wavelength of light are different to previous spectroscopic determinations. The optical frequency measurements can be very precise. Definitely, I think many of the things he did in laser spectroscopy had an impact on just about all the laser people in the world. You don't need to be in his lab for a week before he comes in with some goofy new thing that uh, has attracted his attention. I don't know how he finds out about all those things. Just like following Ted's spirit, being curious, being explore physics at a level that is of interest. It's not necessary you have to follow a particular goal. Sometimes your personal interest, your curiosity can take you further away from the goals you originally set, but you can have many interesting discoveries that's unexpected. I think I benefited from the atmosphere, the excitement in the lab, which was trying new uh, methods which was developing new technologies and, and I, was, I benefited from this uh, interplay between uh, fundamental ideas, simple basic ideas and technology. I'm enjoying to see how people working with me are growing, are becoming independent and so we have a growing family. Our kind of science is really fantastic. It is able to touch fundamental <coughs> questions of science, but at the same time it provides a playground for inventions, for creation of new tools. And of course it's wonderful to interact with young people, to see how young energy and enthusiasm uh, lets our science flourish. To attract bright young people, you have to motivate them by curiosity. We have to try to drive yourself uh, beyond what was supposed to be the boundaries that you could not uh, that you could not break, that you could not overcome. The first advice is you should love what you're doing. If you don't really love it, then think of doing something else. Think of doing something else in science, or think of uh, doing something else. Uh, don't do it because you think um, you want to be a famous scientist. Well, I wish Ted's next 50 years or the next 75 years it will be as productive as his first 75 years. And I, I wish Ted to live long, prosper, and be healthy all the time. And we are looking up to him for many years to come. Most important issue is that he is enjoying each day and has good health to have curiosity be his leader. That's how he has always been, is to f learn some new thing. Everyone has wished him to go on uh, doing this fantastic physics. I think it's amazing that he, uh, he's still so active and his lab is still uh, uh, getting so many uh, wonderful results. In the past, it has proven that what is fun for us most likely is also fun for others. And so we, we help to uh, keep this wonderful enterprise going and joyful for many people.